so for this deck, I'm going to be honest. I was not excited about this commander at first, like not at all. And the reason I wasn't excited was because this was a universes beyond commander for a game series that I just don't really care about. Like I'm not a big fan of Assassin's Creed, never have been. I don't think I ever will be. But recently, a friend of mine pulled a bunch of these out of packs and just started handing them around at the table like Oprah Winfrey. So I just kind of thought, you know, this commander, Shea Cormac, actually looks like he'd be really fun as an Orzov control piece. So let's go ahead and build that. Shea Cormac is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one Orzov commander that has the Shadow Spear ability of being able to yank Hexproof, Indestructible, and Protection and Shroud and Ward all off of our opponent's pieces, which is kind of nutty to think about, honestly. I'm not used to having that kind of utility on something. Also, whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability we control, we can drop a bounty counter on any of their creatures that we targeted, and then we can go ahead and get two on one counters on Shea Cormac if the creature that has a bounty counter dies at any point. This means we're effectively going to be building a pseudo Voltron commander where the game plan is to have Shea Cormac ram his blade thoroughly up somebody's ass. Now, we are going to be trying to make this a somewhat fair deck, so the only real way we have to give him a ton of evasion is going to be with Rogue's Passage, because otherwise, yeah, this would be kind of an unfun experience for most people. Being unable to play their cards for a very long amount of time before finally just succumbing to commander damage. I don't want to do that necessarily. I want to focus more on the control aspect where if somebody runs out of resources, the punishment is losing the game. So that's kind of where I want to be. But you can obviously build him however you want. If you want to slot in a lot more evasion, that is entirely on you. That said, let's get into the core strategy of our deck. The first thing is we are running a Voltron style commander, so we need lots and lots of protection. So Bastion Protector will give him indestructible. Redemption Arc can also give him indestructible. And General's Enforcer can give him indestructible and also give us some graveyard exiling shenanigans that we have access to. We can give him Hexproof in the form of Mask of Abyssin and Mirror Shield. And we can also phase him out from things like our own board wipes with cards like Haystack. This should give us plenty of ways to keep our commander on the board to get maximum benefit from his stuff. But if any of these protection pieces happen to leave, then we have a recursion piece in Sun Titan and an Ascent from Avernus, which can get a ton of creatures that we'll talk about a little later onto the board as well. On top of that, we have some utility for our removal spells that we will have to talk about here in a second in the form of these five cards here. Beginning with Hammers of Moradin, this creature has Myriad, so we'll get multiple of them every time they swing. And whenever he attacks, we will get a tap on each of our opponent's creatures, or at least one creature that each of our opponents controls. That will also put bounty counters on all of those creatures, so if they die for any reason later on in the game, then we will go ahead and get our 1-1 one, one counters for that. We also have Giant Killer to give us access to destruction of ta said tapped creatures, with the ability to blow up big creatures on the left side of the adventure as well. Deathbringer Lead says that whenever we cast a white spell, we can tap a creature, and if we cast a black spell, we can blow up a target creature if it is tapped. This can help us two for one with a lot of our cards later in the game. And also, we have a Gilrain Dunedain Protector. Gilrain is one of our only ways to blink cards in our deck, and she allows us to do so whenever we want. So we can use this as a way to blink our commander to protect it if we really want to, or we can use this to reuse something like a Shriek Maw later in the game. We also have Mimic That to reuse those cards as well, giving us the ability to constantly have access to a token version of those cards with powerful ETBs that we can use to slowly clear the board away. We can also use this to deny somebody access to a reanimation target, and we can also use the Mimic Vat to create token copies of linchpin pieces of other people's strategies that can also benefit us as well. Say we're fighting another crimes deck and we get rid of somebody's Marchesa or something like that, or anything else that cares about crimes, as we are targeting a lot in this deck. Past that, everything else is going to be in the other sections of the video because the core strategy in this deck is actually 
actually removal. So let's talk about how we're going to draw a lot of cards before getting into, honestly, the meat of this video. For the draw section of the deck, we are going fairly simple. Lots of one cast draw twos and threes with a little bit of extra flair on top of that. Beginning with Feed the Infection, we draw three cards and lose three life. Ambitious Cost does the exact same thing, and Ancient Craving does the same thing. Hostile Negotiations allows us to exile three cards twice and then show them to an opponent in a face down and a face up pile, and they pick one of the piles to hand to us, which sometimes will give us amazing stuff and sometimes will give us absolute garbage. Either way, we're paying four mana to draw three at a better, more reasonable rate at instant speed than things like Ancient Craving. Then we have Harvester of Souls, which will give us recurring draw anytime we blow up a non-token creature. Cothiped, which will give us recur recurring draw anytime any permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard. Be careful with this one. This one needs to be comboed with Gil Rain, so that if somebody tries to board wipe to deck us out, we can go ahead and flip him out of reality and bring him back at a more opportune time. Then we have Cut of the Profits, allowing us to draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the amount we pay. We also have Casualty 3 three on it so any of our ETB creatures that we do not need later in the game we can use cut of the profits to get extra draw when we sacrifice them morbid opportunist will also give us recurring draw once every time a creature dies once every turn and then starving revenant gives us access to a surveil two and then paying six life to draw two and anytime we draw a card if we have eight or more permanent cards in our graveyard target opponent can lose one life and we will gain one life not a quick win con not a very strong win con and it doesn't even benefit us by being a crime for most cards in this deck but it is still a decent bit of draw with a body attached to it with a small burn that we do get access to that can combo really well with cards like kothafed then we have Read the Bones, Scry 2, Draw 2, and Lose 2 Life. Very simple, very efficient, and honestly, more people should be running this in their budget decks. That said, let's get to the meat of things. How are we going to make our opponents not win the game, and how are we going to advance our own game strategy? All right, on to the meat of the deck. I wanted to speed through everything so we could get to this part because honestly, this is by far one of the most expensive expansive removal and interaction packages I have ever built, but since our commander relies intensely and heavily on that removal package, I figured it was probably worth a shot to go ahead and go with a 25 card removal package for this deck. Beginning with Chain Assassination. Destroy a creature, and if another creature died this turn, draw a card. And if we dealt combat damage with our commander, then the card costs less. Dark Hatchling also can destroy any non-black creature while being a flyer that can pick our opponent's life totals down bit by bit. Mortify can blow up creatures or enchantments. Phantom Blade, when it enters the battlefield, we can attach it to one target creature we control and then destroy one other creature. So we attach this to our commander and then destroy another creature, and this will give our commander a little bit of evasion to go with his extra power that we are gaining. One of the few ways I'm okay giving a commander like this evasion so that we don't end up having those very one-sided games. Games. Now remember, the way Shea Cormac works, every single time that we target an opponent with a spell or ability, or an opponent's creature with a spell or ability, it gains a bounty counter. And then after we blow the card up, it will give two counters to our commander. We will be doing this throughout the entire game to build a commander who can one-shot anybody if they let us. Since our deck is so heavy on removal, our main plan as the villain of this story is to use up all of our opponent's resources. Once they're out of resources, that will spell game. Now, this does make us weak to certain token strategies, but we do have ways around that too with things like Rogue's Passage and phasing out our commander with the uh, haystack while also using a board wipe. That said, let's go ahead and continue. Overseer of the Damned uh, blows up a creature when it pops onto the board, and also anytime a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, we can make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, which is very, very helpful for trying to help us close out games too. Hex destroys six target creatures. Note, six target creatures must be on the board when you cast Hex. So 
make sure that this is on a board that is relatively thick, but this will give our commander plus 12, plus 12 when we use it. Uh, Utter End also exiles a non-land permanent. Shriek Maw can blow up any non-artifact, non-black creature by evoking it. It also has evasion with fear. Ravenous Jupacabra blows up a creature when it touches the board. Feed the Swarm can blow up a creature or an enchantment. Necrotal has first strike and also blows up a non-artifact, non-black creature when it touches the board. Patron of the Vein has evasion and also blows up a creature and opponent controls when it touches the board. And any time a creature and opponent controls dies, it will be exiled and we put a 1-1 counter on Patron of the Vein, giving us access to a way to deal with uh, decks that are trying to recur cards themselves. Then we have Tragic Slip, which will give a creature neg 13, neg 13, which will destroy the creature and also get around things like indestructible when we don't have the mana to sink into our commander's ability for whatever reason. Hirobi Death's Whale will turn any of our targeting and tapping abilities into auto death abilities while it is out, but please note, if you have Hirobi on the board, you need to make sure that your commander is already protected with Shroud or Hexproof or whatever you want to do, because if Hirobi's on the board, then you will be auto killing your commander if you do not find a way around that. Magus of the Abyss says at the beginning of every player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature uh, that player controls of their choice. It can't be regenerated. So if our commander already has indestructible, then we can just keep on targeting our own commander with this and not have to worry. We can also use this to blow up our spent creatures who have already ETB'd that we don't necessarily worry about. And finally, if we have to blow up the Magus of the Abyss, we will blow up the Magus of the Abyss. But I do like this card because this gives us plus two, plus two on every single player's turn as we are constantly targeting those things with the ability of Magus. Bovine Intervention can blow up an artifact or creature, giving somebody an ox in return. Royal Assassin blows up tapped creatures. Despart can exile any permanent with mana value four or greater. Prismarian Mil Eliminator is one of our ways around big boards as it can give all creatures neg two, neg two until end of turn that a player controls. But it also can destroy a target creature, synergizing with our commander. Leech into Ashes is another way to deal with those heavy token boards, as it can exile any non-land permanent, and if there's a token that has the same name as that permanent, all those tokens will go away as well. Generous Gift gives us Omni Removal. Dalek Drone is another evasive creature that blows up a creature and makes a player lose three life. Slaughter is a recurrable way to blow up cards. All you have to do is pay four life into it, and we can repeatedly blow up non-black creatures and prevent them from regenerating, which is sometimes important. Vindicate is another way to blow up any target permanent. We are not running as many cards like Abtruse Appropriation in here. Uh, I chose Vindicate instead because it does say destroy and we need to have a higher amount of destruction specifically to synergize with our commander. Otherwise, this would be Abtruse. And then we have Visara the Dreadful, one of the most expensive cards in the deck, but it does allow us to tap her to blow up any target creature. And of course, like with most of these things, it can't be regenerated, which sometimes matters. But with the board wipes, we already showed two in the targeted removal section, but in the pure board wipes, we have Decree of Pain, which will blow up all creatures and let us draw a card for every creature blown up this way. And it has a cycling ability, which can get under our commander's toughness. And Austere Command is another way to get under our commander's values by destroying all creatures with mana value three or less or four or greater depending on what we are being threatened with we could also get rid of all artifacts or enchantments with this which can be very helpful against certain decks like enchantress that tend to get those massive board states of hard to deal with auras Whew. that all said that's a lot of removal let's talk about how we're going to afford all of this glorious cardboard As for our mana and ramp, we do have some hefty costing removal pieces, so we need to be able to afford those. So we have a ramp package that should be able to make sure we get there. Beginning with Charitable Levy, this will stack our opponents out for three spells, and then after the third spell is cast, we will get any planes out of our deck and put on the battlefield tapped and draw a card to replace the Charitable Levy. We also have Bandit's Hall, which is anytime we commit a crime, which our deck is always doing, we get to put a loot counter on the hall. We can use this for mana at any point, or we can pay two and tap it 
it to remove two loot counters from it to draw a card to replace our spent removal pieces. Honored Heirloom allows us to circumvent reanimation uh, players by having a mana rock that can also just get rid of their reanimation pieces. Hedron Archive can help us pay for some of our higher, uh, higher cost cards, but also it can let us draw cards later in the game when we need it to. Same with Mind Stone and Commander Sphere. Then we have Charcoal and Marble Diamond, two mana artifacts that just do their job and do their job well. Wayfarer's Bobble can grab basic land out of the deck. Bounty Board as a little more interesting. We add a mana of any color with it. We can also pay one and tap it to put a bounty counter on it at sorcery speed and or any on any creature rather. Sorry. And whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, each of its uh, controller's opponents will draw a card and gain two life. So this will give help to one of our opponents every time we blow up cards, but this will also allow us to keep drawing cards and have access to resources we need to keep going in the game. Then we have Orzhov Signet and Arcane Signet, two more two mana artifacts that just do their job and do their job well. When it comes to lands, we've got 12 swamps and 11 planes. These are just basic lands. They are amazing. They do their job. I don't know why people are scared of running more basic lands in their deck, but honestly, they shouldn't be. For dual lands, we are running Command Tower, Tainted Field, Temple of Silence, Orzhov Basilica, and Shine Shadow Snarl. Now, normally I don't like running temples, but as we are running a control deck, there are lots of times where it is very crucial that we get a control piece or a land or whatever we need for a specific situation from the top of our deck. Being a control deck, we are often going to be enemy player number one, so having access to this ability is not the worst thing in the world. Though if you have the money, definitely avoid using this and use a surveil land instead. As for our fetching lands, we've got Escape Tunnel, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expanse, which are all copies of the same card. Shire Terrace and Promising Vein, which are a little better, uh, and also can be you know, come into, come into play untapped lands when we need them to be that. Otherwise, sacrifice them, get the color fixing you need. Myriad Landscape is also a, another wonderful ramp piece in the form of a land. And then we have our utility lands. Pit of Offerings to get rid of things in graveyards. Rogue Passage to make sure that our commander is always able to make it in when it needs to. And Bonders Enclave to give us a little bit of extra draw power if our commander has seen at least two card deaths so far. With that all said, that is all of the mana, but what if you wanted to invest a little more money into the deck? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. If you've got the coin to spend on upgrading this deck, there are a few cards that I would search for. And obviously, if you are going into higher power tables, maybe you also want to get some more evasion for the commander to make sure that he makes his way in there. But again, that's not the main goal of our deck right now. That said, the first card I would look out for is Tesa Karlov. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability will trigger an additional time. It also gives our creature tokens Vigilance and Lifelink. Me mainly want this just so we can get our commander to much, much higher power levels much, much faster. That is also a wonderful other board wipe we have access to that specifically targets each creature that it's going to blow up so we get lots of bounty counters. Intrepid Hero is another way to re or just constantly get rid of big threats and it is recurrable. Stroke of Midnight is probably one of the things I would replace any of the exile removal cards with in this specific version of the deck because, well, we do want to see things die specifically. Grave Betrayal will give us an ever-increasing army of cards as we blow up things our opponents have. Honestly, this card is a win con in and of itself. Dam is a board wipe that can also be used to blow up specific cards and trigger our commander if we need it to. Avatar of Woe is another way to repeatedly blow up creatures. Termination Facilitior is also wonderful. It can put bounty counters on any target creature or planeswalker when our commander is not on the board. And if a creature with a bounty counter on it is dealt damage, it will automatically be destroyed. Roy. Just gives our commander a little more oomph. Phyrexian Arena is a card I typically don't like running in decks, but as this deck has such a high chance of running out of cards as a control deck, then throwing one of these on the board will not actually hurt you too much. Black Market Connections is another Phyrexian Arena replacement that also gives us access to Changeling Tokens and Ramp. Shizo Death Storehouse can give our commander more access to evasion in the land base, and Mithril Coat is one of the best ways to give a commander creature any kind of indestructible, as it can happen at instant speed when somebody is trying to remove it off the board. That all said, how do I feel about this guy? 
like I said before, I wasn't initially that excited about Shea Cormac, but he does present us with an interesting scenario. An Orzhov Control Voltron deck, which is not really something we tend to have all that often. So I am excited about him due to the uniqueness of what he brings to the Commander format, even if I may not be as excited about his universes beyond status. Maybe one day we'll get lucky enough to get a universes within a version of him, and maybe when that happens, I'll go ahead and do a Redux version of this deck as I've had a chance to test it out a little bit. That all said, I do want to thank you all for watching this video. I want to thank you all for being here on the channel and helping us grow further and further. I was super surprised when we were able to pass 4,000 subscribers to begin with. That's just honestly a number I didn't expect us to get to, and 5,000 as well. I'm just floored that you guys like the content enough to get us this far. That all said, if you have friends who like Magic the Gathering content or budget content, maybe consider throwing this video over their way so they can see it and it'll help my channel grow. And hey, more budget players is always great. It's good to have stronger players at your tournaments, regardless of what their wallet size looks like. That all said, thank you for watching and insert end of video tagline here. Hey, just wanted to give a quick thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who help keep me afloat and help keep this channel going. YouTube and Twitch are wonderful platforms, but at the end of the day, stability is not one of their strong suits. If you want to support my channel, then obviously Patreon is one of the best ways of doing that. Link is in the description. But I do want to personally thank everybody who has contributed to the channel. Those people would be Red Joker, Purple Poundini, Gemption, Briskrieg, Jupe the Malignant, Michael, Ravalern, Mabity Babity, Astral Frontier, Autumn and Angel, Nixie Chan, Mark Anthony, Victorian Alchemist, Sagitt. I'm not saying the last part of that, and you know that. Arctan Arc Lassier, Curatorian, Dren Hadamata, Jordan M, John L, Lord Bleck, Smiling Game Master, and Fire Shard and everyone else who supports my channel and lets me do what I do full time. This is a dream job of mine that I never believed that I would be able to take full time, and with your help, I've been able to do it. So thank you so, so very much for that. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you all enjoy, and I hope you all are having a wonderful time. I will see you all in the next one, hopefully.